Hey, welcome back. Another day, another stream. And today we're um, continuing our work with uh, emails, but this time we're using the brand new uh, GraphQL powered email system I created since last time. So this is gonna be a chance to give you a quick demo of how it works. And then uh, I'll also adapt it for the newsletter package, which is still on the older uh, non-GraphQL, non-cool system. So we're back on Zen's room on our Airbnb clone project, and we have one email for uh, creating a new room, and I'm just gonna add one more for some other action. Um, maybe a new booking. So let's, let's go back to our emails folder here on the server. We already have bookings. We'll create, uh, this is going to be a handlebars file because handlebars are our templating language for emails. And maybe in the future, we'll use uh, react components for emails as well. That could be pretty cool, but for now it's handlebars. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll copy paste this as a start. So, um, we'll, okay, we'll leave it like this for now. It's not going to work, but, um, we'll need to figure out. So actually I'm going to remove this. Okay, so I have my new template. Now I need to register it. So again, you have to register it in two places. First, you have to register it with the package as an asset. So bookings. Uh, so that's step one. Step two is registering with Vulkan. So fetching the asset and then registering it with add templates and it's called bookings new in bookings. Okay. So now that this is done, the template is available to us, but we also have to register the email. So the difference again between an email and a template, a template is just a template. An email includes the template, but also uh, a subject and uh, also uh, a function that indicates how to fetch the email's contents. And that's what's a little bit new here. So I'm going to copy the one I made for rooms new, call it bookings new, and then template so we can specify our um, new template. Path is going to be a path used for testing the email. Uh, so that's going to be useful. Subject, how you get the subject. Uh, so in this case, we'll say that a booking, or actually we'll come back to this because the next part will influence uh, how we get that data. And the next part is the GraphQL query used to fetch the data. And that's, that's the new uh, thing here. So on the client, we use GraphQL to fetch data to show in, the, in your React components. Here on the server, we're also using the same GraphQL resolvers, but to use the data used to populate the um, email. So for the room, we queried the room single resolver, and now for the booking, we'll query the bookings single resolver. Uh, let's check the booking schema to see what information we want. We want um, uh, not so much the user ID, but the user, the um, the user uh, field created by user resolver. Same thing with the room. And then we want to start at and that number of guests. And I guess this will be created when the, the booking is created. So it won't be paid yet. So we'll leave off pay that for now. So user room. Uh, room name, I think. Um, start at and at and number of guests. Now, again, I'm using the exact same GraphQL syntax I would use on the client. 
including uh, nested fields. So, you know, I, I could go deeper here. I could do a description. I could do anything I want that's part of the room. Uh, and finally, test variables. If we want to use any uh, variables for testing, uh, if we don't specify anything, this will be empty. And then by default, it will just pick a room at random or maybe like the first one in the database it finds. So that should work fine for our testing purposes. And yeah, finally, the last step is the booking, uh, the subject. So first we test if data is empty, as it will be in uh, the case of um, where, when would it be empty? So when we test, it won't be empty, but there's a uh, one place where it will be empty, which I'll show right away, which is this screen. So uh, here we're just listing out all the emails registered with Vulkan and we're not passing them any data. So we want to show, uh, you know, this kind of subject placeholder just so people can understand what the template does. So in this case, it will be empty. And then we'll just say, um, So actually, we'll we'll do this. Um, no, no, that's correct. So booking, and here we'll say booking dot room dot name, and so our empty object will have uh, this this structure room name. If not booking single, now I'm gonna save and see if once I reload our new email appears here. Okay, cool. A booking has been created for room name. Perfect. I can check out the template or I can preview it. Uh, everything looks good here. And then when I preview it, um, so let's see. So one reason it might not work is if there is a problem with the GraphQL query, and there is, cannot query field name on type booking. Yes. So a booking doesn't have a name. That that makes total sense. I'm gonna reload. And here you go. So the template doesn't show much, but below that you can see um, this is actually the data passed. Um, to that specific uh, email. So, okay, so let's look at some things. Uh, start at and that do have a date content. Number of guests is null, room name description is null. Uh, that might mean two things. It could be that there's a problem with our resolver or it could be that there's a problem with our data. So uh, let's make sure our data is properly formatted first. Actually, I don't want the shell, I want uh, Mongo. So this one has a uh, ID, room ID, start number of guests, and so on. So I'm going to take this one and uh, do this. So this time we're taking a specific booking which we know has these fields. So if they're still null, it will mean there's a problem somewhere else, but they're not. So probably uh, one of the bookings I created, like uh, when I was testing out the app at the beginning, uh, didn't have the same schema or had some missing fields. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I think it's probably the best thing to do is, um, I'm just gonna remove all bookings. And this way I can also remove this because obviously like uh, on somebody else's uh, machine, on somebody else's database, that ID will not exist. So. so now when I reload, it might just not work at all because uh, yeah, document not found, but that's fine. We'll just create a new booking. So uh, at the same time, I can show you a couple improvements I made. So. First, I added an alert to make sure that um, you can't create an empty booking. Now, obviously, 
JavaScript alerts are not great from a UX standpoint, but you know all of that is kind of a placeholder for the features we need. And uh, you'll also notice I'm not logged in currently. So let's see what happens when I want to book a room without being logged in. So I'm going to book it from September 1st to September 8th for two, oops, two people. And so I'm redirected to the login screen, which is good. But the cool part is it's actually going to remember the action I was doing. And once I sign in, it will create the actual booking. So, you know, I'm going to keep this here. Um, this is the ID. And now if I reload this, I'm actually going to add the idea here. So basically, you know, this is the booking, is it? ID JDM4. Yeah, so that's the booking we just created. Let me double check the dates, September 1st, September 8th. Now, the dates are different here because um, it's a time zone thing. So it should be okay. Uh, in other words, here the dates are localized to, well, I guess my uh, browser. And here they are not. So whenever you're dealing with, with dates, it's worth double checking that everything you know lines up correctly. Um, in this case, though, I think, you know, well, I guess you, you could argue the point because since we're only dealing with dates and not times, uh, maybe we just want to keep the date and have it be. Well, I guess you will have check-in dates, though. So, hmm. yeah, no, we do need to take time zone into account because you're. Um, or no, actually, we we don't because you always book dates according to the time zone of where you're going. So. In other words, yeah, no, that makes sense. If I book a date on, um, yeah, if I book a date on a room on uh, September 1st, then that needs September 1st for the time zone of this room. So there will be, there will need to be a bit of uh, time zone conversion Either that, or just store the date as a as a pure date without the time or time zone. That might be the simplest way to do it, actually. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, I'll leave that for later. That's definitely something to make a note of. But for now, I'm still trying to uh, build out my email template. So now I have actually the the structure of the data. So it's really easy to fill out the template. So uh, I had booking single and then user this dot display name. Um, so that's uh, the URL. And so I haven't asked for the profile URL, but I'll do that right now. Um, go back to my email, user ID display name, profile URL. Now, Profile URL is interesting because it's not like a real, um, a real database field. It's a GraphQL only field, but it's still on the schema for the user's collection. So originally those schemas were used to define the shape that data should have in the database, but you can just as well um, use it to generate GraphQL only fields. Um, so it's kind of a hack, but it works pretty well, for, at least for now. And this lets us use this rather than a helper. Here you can see um, I have a helper to get the profile URL based on the user. And if I reload, you'll get it right here. But the problem is this is JavaScript code, right? So it wouldn't work um, here. You know, if, if I say users dot whatever, uh, then I need to import the user and import is JavaScript, so it won't work. So 
that's kind of the whole point behind JSX, uh, you know, React's like templating language, which is not really a templating language, but the point is it starts JavaScript, so you can do imports, you can call helpers inside your template or JSX. Handlebars, though, is a real templating language, so you cannot do that. And previously, you would have uh, had to, you know, you would would have needed one more operation here, like uh, transform data, which is what we had before, and uh, return uh, get profile URL of user, whatever. And you know, that's one more step. It's kind of pain painful. GraphQL, though, which what's so cool is you can just add it as a field, and then uh, you know, make the field available through your GraphQL API. And that's really the direction that uh, Vulkan is going. So, um, you know, a good example is the post package that has all these helpers. And down the road, these helpers will only ever uh, be used inside resolvers. Similarly to uh, how you query the database, that will also only ever be used in the resolvers. And then whenever you need to, you know, let get the status name of a post, well, you just call post.status name because that will be a property on the post object as provided through the GraphQL schema. So that's really cool. Anyway, booking single user profile URL. Um, so it's not has added a new room, it has uh, and then let's add a link to the room. And this will be booking single dot page your URL. And now um, room page URL and booking single page URL probably don't exist yet. So first of all, I need to add them in here. I'll put, I'll put that first. And I also need to create them on the schema. So uh, you know what, I'm gonna um, copy that. Uh, how do we get the URL of a booking? I think we can just return, um, keep things simple for now. So so I think, I wonder actually, um, I think there's a, yeah, we have this. get the site URL and then bookings and then uh, the ID and we need to import this okay so that's good for page URL here and then we also needed it where uh, in uh, was it room? Yeah. And let's reload. Okay. Page URL on type booking. Oh, did I forgot to change the name? Okay, yeah, um, so you have to provide a resolver name as well, which actually, you know what, I, what I'll do? I'm gonna remove this, <clears throat> sorry. Um, and if there is no resolver name, I'll just make it default to the field name. So let's see, 
if we can do that real quick. Uh, resolver, if Phil has a resolve as, push it to schema. Uh, so here, field resolve as field name. And then let's just use resolver name here. And here. Okay. Let's see if that works. Utils is not defined. So I probably forgot to import it here. So the reason it's saying uh, run query error is because the error is being called by the function that runs the GraphQL query. Okay, page URL with the right name, page URL, right name, Perfect. So we can double check our email uh, template. This is the right uh, name and user profile URL. This should also work. Um, so it's not room slash. Okay, let, let's see. Oh, it's room singular. Okay. Yeah, the whole singular plural thing is kind of fun. be a pain yeah okay room okay booking perfect uh, I'll uh, format this a little bit better maybe uh, booking new now here's another example um, you can see that this data is not formatted. So again, intuitively you'd want to do uh, like moment, blah, blah, blah. But that's not possible again, because this is a, a template. So let's create some new fields and then go to our booking schema. I guess this would be a date. Um, yeah, create her date as a type in GraphQL as well. Bookings, and so this would be start at formatted. And so we'll return moment. Uh, let, let's check the moment uh, docs real quick. Uh, display format. Well, that, that should work. It's a pretty good format. And do the same for, uh, and that formatted. Of course, import moment. And the cool thing is we'll be able to reuse that on the client as well. So, and that also actually lets you potentially uh, load less code on the client because let's say that, um, well, you can imagine that the only reason you need moment is to format those dates. Well, now you can format them on the server and just send the formatted string. Um, so actually, yeah, that's a string. 
send the formatted string to the client without sending the whole moment library to do the conversion on the client. So a moment might not be a, a great example because um, we use it for other things, but uh, there's definitely cases where that might be uh, useful. And you do know it's not working because we are not asking for that in the query. So start at end at, start at formatted, and at for. And I guess we don't even need start at end at anymore. Nice. Um, and of course, this should be end at. Now it might seem like this is a lot of boilerplate for um, for what it does. You know, you could probably remove these two. Um, that might cause problem with simple schema uh, used for the validation currently, but in the future, I think uh, that's what we'll do. Okay, perfect. So I hope this gives you a good uh, overview of how to create uh, email templates in Vulkan now with the new GraphQL <coughs> um, system. And uh, maybe I can show you a bit how it works behind the scenes. So I'm gonna close everything. And um, well, let's look at how this, uh, I guess this page is actually rendered. So it's rendered through a uh, picker, which is a, uh, a really simple server-side router, so like Express, but uh, you know, super simple. We could probably use Express for that. It's just kind of a legacy uh, package from uh, uh, the Vulkan's Meteor roots, sh shall we say. And the key thing here is uh, this part. So we look for, so we want to get the data used to populate the email. So basically this object, that's the whole like tricky part, how do we get that? So first we look to see if the email has a query. Um, and again, the query is this uh, string. It's just a, a text string. If it has, we call run query. And run query uh, runs the query as its name indicates, but crucially it does it on the server, right? So unlike Apollo client, which we usually used to run queries, which is on the client. Uh, this queries your GraphQL schema directly. And um, um, yeah, it's defined right here. So what it does isn't that complex. First, um, well, we need a context. So again, the context is uh, when you have a resolver, you have a few arguments passed to the resolver. You have uh, the root object, if it's a, a root query or the parent object, if it's a field resolver, then you have the arguments. So the variables pass to the resolver. And then the third one here is the context, which is um, where you put everything else that's not really an argument, but you do need access to inside the resolver. So in our cases, there's the current user and there's also um, uh, the collection, such as users and posts. So this works because Apollo set the context, but here we're bypassing Apollo completely. So we have to set the context ourselves. First, we do it by setting the current user, and we're not passing a whole user object. We're just passing is admin true to trick the resolver into thinking that this is an admin, because after all, we're on the server, so it makes sense that we would have uh, maximum privileges, so admin privileges. Uh, again, everything I'm talking about here, like run query, this only works on the server. So there's no security concerns here. It can't be called on the client. Um, and then within the scope of this specific query, uh, we add data loader objects. So data loader is used to uh, cache uh, database requests. And it, it does that its scope is one request uh, on the client. So in other words, you know, when I load a page, that's one request. And um, 
whenever the same database object is queried twice within that request, it will get cached by a data loader. Uh, it doesn't get cached across requests or across users because that would lead into you know, cache invalidation problems. You can imagine if, if uh, I cache an object and then it changes and the next user still gets the cache version, uh, it might be a problem. So to simplify that, the recommended data loader pattern is just have a very, very limited cache that's only for one request. So here on the server, we don't have requests, but we have function calls. And we're doing the same thing. Every time you call run query, it will create its own context and its own like new data loader instances uh, to cache those uh, database requests. So that's what we do. And then we, we put everything on the context. We run the query using the GraphQL function, which we import from GraphQL. So that's like the original uh, GraphQL. It's not Apollo or anything. It's the old school uh, GraphQL from Facebook, GraphQL.js. We pass it our schema, uh, executable GraphQL schema object. We pass it the query. I don't remember what the third argument is. Uh, the fourth is the context, and the last one is the variables. And then if there are any errors, we throw it, or if not, we return the result. So really, uh, that, that's the whole thing. That's how you make GraphQL requests on the server by passing your schema. And so if we go back to our routes function, or file, sorry, that's, that's what we do. We run the query with uh, the query, variables, and we return the result. Now, notice we're using the await keyword together with uh, async, and that way we can write everything in one line. We don't need callbacks or promises or anything like that. It's super convenient. And then um, there's a few more, you know, like tests to see if the email has any data of its own. Why would it have uh, data of its own? Well, uh, let me find this for example here we want to send a test email that just shows the current date so that doesn't belong to any collection it's not part of any graphql schema so uh, that's why i wanted an easy way to just uh, add random data like that and uh, i so where is that thing defined yeah right here so you can see we're not specifying a query, we're specif specifying a data function that returns an object. And that object, together with uh, the, whatever the query returns, if it's specified, those two will get merged and the final result will be used as the, as the email data. Uh, in fact, you can see that email right here. Oh, so actually it doesn't work. huh? So why not? It might be a problem here. So let me log out the this and maybe also email. So again, we, we were expecting to see the date right here. So it's possible that email.data isn't defined. I'll, I'll also log out the template just to uh, make sure we're passing the right email. Right, so data is undefined. Template path data subject. So, okay, why would it be undefined? Uh, where do we get email from? Getting from here for each Vulcan emails. OK. 
Okay, template path, get property subject guest test object, uh, which is not the same as what we have here. So it's possible that we are overriding it. Um, do I have another test email somewhere else? That's possible. Okay, it doesn't seem like it. So, okay, no, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense actually. Uh, this this package, this is in Vulkan email templates, which is not used by Zenthroom, I just remembered. So there's no way that could work. So the test thing we have here is actually right there. Okay, that makes sense. So let me just copy this over and try again. Okay, perfect. So you've seen how we can mix, or in this case not mix, but specify uh, arbitrary data for an email or query it through GraphQL. Uh, one more thing I did last time, or not last time, but in between. Since last time I, um, let me find, um, Okay, yeah, so I'm not gonna show you the result right now, but in the Vulkan notifications package, which contains notification notifications for uh, things like users and posts and so on, one of the email I wanted to send was an email for uh, having your account approved. And um, the text includes you've just been invited, start posting, welcome to and then you want the name of the site. So I could have used um, the pattern I just showed you with data to merge both the GraphQL uh, issued data and arbitrary data. So I could, could have used that to get the site title, but I decided to do something else uh, just to try it out, which is to create a new uh, site data uh, resolver, query resolver on my GraphQL schema. Uh, just a super simple thing and uh, in order to return static data so I thought this might be useful just as a general thing to have and uh, you can see it right here so now you're also able to get metadata about the site uh, of course we could add more like image uh, description and so on but you can get that metadata via the GraphQL API, which I think could come in useful, especially if you want to hook up, you know, um, uh, a mobile app to your site or another client or something. Uh, you might not have access to that settings adjacent file, which has this information. So uh, getting it through GraphQL could be really useful as well. So uh, I think that's about it for today. Um, I wanted to get to the newsletter as well, but I might leave that for next time or maybe work on it in the meantime. I'm not quite sure yet, but basically what we'll do for the newsletter, uh, if I can show you the newsletter package. Um, so there is a lot of um, logic such as here get posts build you can see where we are building um an object to pass to the newsletter of uh from posts uh, that are being passed to this and then we loop over them uh, we try to get the avatar we trim the body we do a lot of processing if post has comments we do some more stuff we do a ton of processing to go from raw post comments and so on data to the final uh, newsletter content. And that could all be replaced. So all this basically probably up to this 
that can all be replaced with a single GraphQL query. Of course, it might be a little bit complex, but this would still be one query. And then any missing uh, field, like maybe um, we don't have the author at our URL, or we don't have the Twitter share URL, we can replace that by uh, field resolvers on the schema. So that's going to be quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of work, but I think it's going to make the newsletter package a lot cleaner. And also the huge improvement is that, as you can see here, everything is hard coded for posts and comments. Uh, with that new pattern using GraphQL to specify the contents, you can adapt it for anything really. So it could be a newsletter of posts and comments, or a newsletter of rooms and bookings, or of videos, or of really anything you want, blog posts. And then you can also mix and match uh, different kinds of contents with this pattern, uh, just like we saw for uh, this query for account approved, where I'm querying both a resolver for a single user and a resolver for site data. Well, for the newsletter, you could imagine having first a section with the latest posts, and then one of the latest comments, then one of the latest news, uh, latest user signups, and those could all be part of the same big GraphQL query. Uh, so it's going to be super powerful, and I'm really excited to use it, especially for Sidebar, uh, which is basically just a newsletter. And um, you know, now that Sidebar has a, a job board, and that I'm adding the job offers to the newsletter is going to be great because now I'm hard coding it. So it's really ugly and it kind of breaks uh, the, the package in, in the sense that I can't just easily update it from uh, the master branch anymore because it's customized to sidebar's needs. With that new GraphQL design pattern, I'll be able to have that query uh, sit inside sidebar, inside sidebar's code base, and then the newsletter package will be completely independent. So it's going to be really cool. And again, I'm excited to work on it. So thanks again for tuning in today. And um, let me know what you think of that new way of populating emails. And looking forward to uh, hanging out next time together. Bye.